Joe Stevenson, social media expert and director of digital intelligence at Intertel. How's it going today? Very good, Andrew. How are you today? I'm doing well. Hey, I put down Facebook to talk to you today, but I still want to talk about social media and specifically in the era of COVID. I think social media can be a lot of fun, but it can also get you into trouble. So I'm wondering if you can give us some examples of things you've seen specifically maybe in the workplace. Yeah, and I think uh, when we... I, I think when you and I are having this type of dialogue, it's important for us to, you know, put those disclaimers out there, right? That this is still a very young pandemic. Um, you know, case law has yet to be established for a lot of this. Um, you know, certainly the science is subjective. Uh, so, you know, when we talk about things and, and we have that kind of um, reference or suggestion to fraud, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. We're just looking at based on what we know today. So we're not um, here to prosecute know, we, anyone. We just want the we're, we're, <laughs> right, right, right. We're just using it as reference to talk and have a dialogue about how we see, you know, particularly the pandemic and COVID reacting with, you know, insurance and insurance fraud and and the benefits or uh, of it. Um, you know, it's it, a, a case comes to mind where you've got somebody who, you know is working, let's say, in the restaurant industry, they've been laid off. Um, you know, the regulations have changed. They're allowing people to come back in. They're allowing limited seating inside. And then somebody, uh, this person suddenly gets exposed to COVID. Hmm. And then a workplace, you know, claim comes in, workers' comp claim for COVID in the workplace. Uh, but then we see that actually, you know, they're out at a major event you know, whether that's a, a party that was being held by an influencer, YouTube influencer in, in L.A., or whether that was, you know, a, a protest uh, or something else where they also could have received that exposure. Uh, and people, well, I think some people are fairly quiet on social media. Other people are still very braggadocious to a certain degree on social media and what they're doing, especially in light of, you know, the, the, the current political climate or, you know, the situations that are going involved. If they're passionate about something, they're out, you know, talking about it. So for me, social media has been a really good way of mapping a lot of these COVID exposures. Mm -hmm. Was this actually a workplace exposure or did they potentially get it through something else? You know, is this person truly going to work, coming home, staying there, using their Peloton uh, and never yeah. leaving? Or right. are they actually going out uh, and, and protesting at night? Or uh, are they going out to parties? Are they, you know, going to a wedding uh, that may be within the guidelines, but then you find out that there's somebody exposed uh, at that wedding and that they could actually have gotten it from there. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's important for us to be analyzing social media during this time, especially with COVID cases. What about unemployment? Obviously, you know, here in the U.S., we saw record unemployment. And I unfortunately, I know several people who are unemployed themselves. And even just trying to get their unemployment benefits was excruciating with old systems and delays and websites being down and things like that. Um, you know, it's no secret that people take advantage of unemployment benefits even before the pandemic, right? They go and they get themselves another job and forget to remind the unemployment office that they're employed again <laughs> or whatever. But um, I can only imagine with the volume that's going through now, there's just no way for these respective agencies to keep track of this. Are they looking at social media for hints that people are taking advantage of unemployment? I think some are, but you also have to, you know, you brought up a great point with, uh, you know, the systems. Uh, I think unemployment is one of those sections of government that um, didn't see upgrades. You know, they're working off of systems, some, some state systems that were built in the in the 80s, early 80s, uh, that just couldn't handle the uh, en masse of unemployment um, applications they were receiving, you know, their stalls and delays. Um, when you're just trying to get through the legitimate applications for unemployment, it's very difficult to spend any time on enforcement. Right. Uh, I know that there are certain groups, you know, welfare fraud agencies in all different states that do use social media. Uh, for that reason, because you do find that the person, yeah, I was unemployed, but, you know, for most people, um, they need that source. And if that 
if that check isn't coming, they've got to go find money. Um, so they're going to turn around, go get a job for Grubhub or pick up a job under the table delivering for pizza. But they also have a tendency to post their uniform or take a picture of their new name tag or, you know, uh, do something that's going to show you uh, that they're working again. Uh, and I think it's it's important for us to remember that we can try to stay private on social media, but the reality is our information is getting exposed in one shape or form or another. Um, I, I may not have any public Instagram accounts, but I can tell you that there's pictures of me on Instagram. Sure. Uh, and if you know where to look or how to look, you're going to find those photographs. Right. Uh, so I, I think the same goes true. Somebody's always going to make that comment in a photo um, that, you know, are you still working for Grubhub? Uh, right. You know, and, and expose the fact that you are working. So, um, yeah, I, I think everybody needs to think about how they can leverage what's publicly available for data now. I, I almost want to say, if you're not going to be honest, be careful, right? But at the end of the day, we really do want to encourage people to be honest, right? When you're taking advantage of the system, it's it's only hurting the rest of the people who are on there because they need to be on there. So uh, right. don't be careful, just be honest. I think that's the best advice for the day. Absolutely. Well, and you know, the other thing that that raises, Andrew, is uh, I, I think... When we talk about employment, too, one of the things that I think we're losing um, uh, sight of is that, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of influencers out there on social media. Mm. You know, regular people who have regular jobs who have turned, you know, TikTok into a money source who are producing videos on YouTube and making money off of that through ad sales. Um, And we don't think about that when we're trying to calculate out somebody's earnings income. Mm. Um, so, you know, yeah, that person doesn't seem like they have a lot or, or you don't think out of the gate that they're, you know, uh, a multimillionaire, uh, but then you find out they have a TikTok account that has, you know, on average, you know, uh, 1.5 million views per video and they're getting paid by TikTok. Um, uh, that could be very lucrative, um, for them. Yeah. So, and that's happening more and more. I, I, I see a lot of YouTubers yeah. who are making not huge money, but they're still making, you know, $300, $500, $1,000. And for most people, that's, that's you know, important money for them. That's an important stream of revenue for them uh, personally. And, and we need to think about that as well. We might have missed our calling. Let's go start a TikTok. <laughs> and let's not. <laughs> yeah, you don't want me lip syncing to anything, that's for sure. Yeah, me either. Hey, really, really nice chatting with you. Thanks for the insights. Be careful what you do out there. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Have a great day.